concept two notes on adenosine triphosphate. So adenosine triphosphate is a really long two words for ATP. So the A, the T, the P, that's where that comes from. So let's kind of give you some background. I'm going to give you some context for what the heck we're talking about in this concept. So your body needs energy to run your cells. I think that's something that just, you know, makes sense. Okay? But here's the deal. Your body cannot directly use your food that you're eating for energy. The energy it can use in the food you eat is stored in its chemical bonds. So we need to break those bonds. So to release this energy for your body to be used, we got to break those bonds. Those bonds have to be broken. Once energy is released, ATP will then carry that energy or store that energy and then to be used later for cell functions. So ATP carries or stores energy for cell functions. It is the only molecule, y'all, that directly powers your body. Think about, like, the food you eat being a check. Like, if someone writes you a check, you can't just, like, go to the store and use a check to pay for something usually. You're going to have to take it to the bank and deposit it and get cash out or whatever. Whereas ATP is, like, straight up cash. It is directly powering your body. Right, and we want to know about its structure and then how it kind of cycles. So it's made of adenine. Right here, this is the adenine, which is a nitrogen base. It's made of a sugar ring, which is and the specific sugar is ribose, which is right here. And then it's made of three phosphate groups. So one, two, three. And those are all held together by very high energy bonds. So the majority of the energy in this molecule, there's energy in all of the bonds, but the majority of that energy is right here. And then there's a little bit less here, a little bit less here, and then less all throughout. So this is really a lot of energies right there. And so we need, if we need to get at that energy, we're going to learn how we do that now in the ATP and ADP cycle. So... Let's say, you know, you've had a really big breakfast, you know, eggs, bacon, toast, whatever. Your body breaks down that food, releases energy from that food, and it gets captured in ATP. Then let's say your, cell, your skin cells need to divide, so they need energy to do that. In order to use this ATP, we're going to rip off this phosphate. We're going to remove this third phosphate, and that's going to release the energy for your cells to use. With that third phosphate gone, it's now ADP, adenosine diphosphate, only two. But then let's say, you know, you have a granola bar, and then you're starting to break down that granola bar, so your body's going to form more ATP. We're going to take this ADP, the energy from your granola bar and a third phosphate, and form more ATP to be used later for another cell process. All right, so like we said, a lot of energy is stored in the bond between these last two phosphates. That's where the majority of the energy is. Energy is released when this phosphate group is removed. And then ADP is changed back into ATP when we add a phosphate group again. This ADP is being recycled. Either we're adding a phosphate in energy or we're releasing a phosphate in energy. The phosphates are not necessarily recycled and neither is the energy. It's different energy being released as what's coming in. So the only thing recycled is this ADP that's getting kind of charged up and then emptied. Charged up and then emptied. All right, so there's my ATP. There's my phosphate being removed, and energy is being released for cell processes like cell division or active transport. All right, there's my ADP that forms. And then to reform ADP, we're going to have to add a phosphate and then energy from broken down food. All right, so let's summarize that. When ATP is broken down, it releases energy for the cell to use, and it becomes ADP plus a phosphate. So we can write this as a chemical equation. So ATP, when I break it apart, I break it into ADP, a phosphate, and energy to be used. All right, now, because energy is a product here, it's being given off, think back to concept one, this much must be an exothermic reaction because it's releasing energy. To make ATP, cells are going to join together ADP and a phosphate using energy from the food you eat as it's broken down in cellular respiration. So ADP plus a phosphate plus energy makes ATP. So energy is not being given off. I'll fix that. Energy is being absorbed. It's being taken in as a reactant. Thus, this must be an endothermic reaction. So I'll correct this, but energy is being absorbed. 
It's a reactant here. It's an endothermic reaction. Note, ATP is formed in this way during cellular respiration, which is a process that happens in your mitochondria to create usable energy for the cell. We're going to talk a lot more about this in concept five. But you do need to know, this energy that's coming in in order to form ATP, this is happening during cellular respiration, which is in your mitochondria. So I want you to know that context going forward. So where does that energy come from again? I know we're being redundant, but this is important. It's coming from carbon-based molecules in your food that are being broken down during cellular respiration. All right, remember your macromolecules? Carbs, that's number one energy source, so they're most commonly broken down for ATP. We can get about 36 ATP from one glucose molecule. Okay, remember they store about four calories of energy in every milligram that they have. You know, we can also break down lipids or fats. That would be kind of our second choice, but we can break them down. Remember, they store about nine calories of energy in every milligram. And then if we have to, we can break down your proteins too um, to get energy because they also store four calories of energy per milligram. All right, that is ATP.